G'day Ziggy D here and welcome to my unique spotlight and analysis for patch 1.1.4 in Path of Exile, of course. Path of Exile, of course! But I know you guys like these videos and I enjoy taking a look at the rad ass but bad ass new uniques that come out every patch. So let's jump straight into it. The first unique is a new unique flask. It is Forbidden Taste Quartz Flask. Your reach exceeds your grasp. Nice and simple, I like it, nice and simple. Firstly, the Quartz Flask base is very cool. It's nice to see something interesting happening with that. Especially since this is a life healing flask that's also a Quartz. Interesting, very interesting combo there. Now, I like the Quartz Flask uh, already. I think it's a pretty cool flask. It allows you to anti-desync, essentially. It's the, it's the anti-desync flask. You, I usually put something like Adrenaline on it, so I get move speed. I only use it as a move speed flask to get out of, you know, get out of danger. This is your ultimate panic button flask, guys. This is your ultimate panic button flask. It's, it, it might just save your life when you get into a bad situation. Firstly, Quartz Flask. Your movement is not blocked by enemies. Bad stuff happens, you activate this, and for 5 seconds, you will not have your stuff blocked by enemies. You can path through packs of enemies, get away from the things that are killing you. Good stuff. Nice. 50% increased charges uses. It uses 60 of 60 charges on you, so you can use it once before you need to recharge it. It's a panic button flask. You shouldn't be using it all the time. You should only be using it, especially once we look at some of the other mods, you should only be using it when uh, there's actual things that are about to kill you, when you're about to die, when you're in trouble. So, recover 50% of your maximum life on use. Yes, if you have 5,000 life, that's 2,500 life. Instant heal on uh, on this on this flask right there. So, that's pretty huge. 50% of your life, that's a big heal. That's a huge heal. But it comes with a drawback. 15% of your maximum life taken as Chaos damage per second over 5 seconds. Now, I'm not very good at math, but that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Quick cutaway. Well, I do some basic math, that is 75% of your life <laughs> over 5 seconds. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I can't even do 5 times 15, but <laughs> we've got it. It's alright. I figured it out. I figured it out, guys. I didn't even use a calculator, I promise. But 75% uh, of your maximum life taken as Chaos Damage per second. Now, that's not too bad if you have zero Chaos Resist. Okay, so you get out of danger. You probably use that time to portal back to town, hopefully, as well. Uh, or you get back and use some of your other flasks to counteract it. However, if you have minus 60 or minus 40 chaos resist, you will take more than 100% of your damage, 100% uh, of your life from damage from this flask. So this flask will kill you. Now, this is obviously useless for a CR character, so I didn't even think that route, which I may have thought about very briefly when I first saw it. It's, it's chaos damage, I'm like, oh, K CI, but wait a second, it heals your life. This, there's no use for this on a CI character, it's absolutely useless. But this is useful on a character who's stacking some chaos resist. If you have either 0% chaos resist or higher, you, this is going to be a very nice panic flask for you, and very powerful. And if you are already stacking a lot of chaos resist in your build, I'm sure you guys know who you are and you know why you're stacking chaos resist. Maybe you're using Death's Oath or something like that then uh, you want to use this flask because it is actually really good as long as that negative effector isn't going to kill you. But it's a very cool new item, very cool to see. It's very cool to see new utility flasks like this make it into the game. So I'm very I'm very psyched about this one. I don't know if this was a uh, diamond... I'm pretty sure this was a diamond supporter created unique, so I'd be curious as to what build they were running. I imagine they are running some sort of chaos resistant build for some reason. So uh, if you guys watch the video, let me know in the comments, because I know some of you guys who make these uniques will often comment in the comments, and I love reading the reasoning behind the design of your uniques, so feel free to let me know, because I'd love to hear it. So, let's jump on over here. The next unique we have is Jaws of Agony, Supreme Spiked Shield. One wrong, one wrong step triggers destruction. Agony slowly dominates the will to live. Look at the art for this thing. It is insane. Oh, that gore. The shield. This is a shield, right? It's a spike shield. Yes, it looks like a spiky shield. However, you'll also notice that the shield itself is a bear trap. This thing is a bear trap. It, it's literally a bear trap shield. It's... <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. How good is this? <laughs> Literally having a massive bear trap on your shield, you can like throw the shield on the ground and enemy can trip, tread on it and bear trap. And Grant's level 20 bear trap skill. It's literally a bear trap. I'm not even joking. Look at this. It's a bear trap. The shield is actually a bear trap, guys. So uh, that's rad. That is rad. I love it. <laughs> 
Now this is uh, probably one of the most criminally underrated new uniques I've seen in a long time. People are very quick to denounce it as being terrible, and uh, I actually think it's really good. And uh, the reason for that is the, the most trappers will run a rare shield of some description, but they'll run crit shields. Now this is not a crit shield, so when people are used to running something like crit shields, and then they see something that is, although it's still good, it's not a crit shield, then uh, it's not, you know, the same sort of thing they've been using, or a better version of the same sort of thing they've been using. It can be hard to see that it's actually really good. But this is fantastic. It's got life, it's got increased physical damage, which increases the damage of bear trap. It's got 18 to 28% increased trap damage, that's a couple of trap nodes right there. It's got uh, a small arctic armor on it, a small arctic armor effect, minus 14 to 18 physical damage taken from attacks, which is very nice. Very nice mitigated factor, we've seen how powerful arctic armor is. And if you're already running Arctic Armor on an Eldritch Battery Trapper, this is going to amplify on top of that. Or if not, it's still going to give you nice physical mitigation against monkeys or things like that. And then, the, the icing, the beautiful, delicious, tasty icing that everyone loves, is the 15% chance to gain a power charge on throwing a trap. Now, there has been some pretty good math done for this. Uh, I've seen some uh, good math done for it on Reddit. And the short of it, the TLDR, is that it's pretty hard to... Uh, generate all of your power charges and sustain your uh, like seven power charges with this alone. This 15% is pretty nice for helping you get a few extra power charges here and there and may maybe maintain your power charges pretty nicely if you're clearing pretty quickly uh, if you're throwing your traps pretty often but it's not going to be enough to uh, generate your full seven power charges so it's not going to replace a power charge of crit or some other method by which you generate power charges in your crit trapper build but it's still going to help support that in addition to being a very nice shield in general. And also you get a bonus level 20 bear trap. Now the cool thing to note about this level 20 bear trap is this this is a shield that has three sockets. It can have three link sockets. Any support gems you socket in this shield will support the level 20 bear trap skill. So you can put added fire in there and it'll increase the actual damage of the bear trap that is part of the shield. It's pretty rad. That's really cool. I didn't actually know that that was a possibility. That was a thing that the devs could design. So you can actually basically just put three support gems in there. I don't actually know what other support gems is. I guess there's like added fire, empower, added chaos, something like that for, for bear trap. But uh, basically you can use those three support gems to have basically a free bear trap skill there with just using the support gems in that shield. So pretty rad and you get a bunch of cool trap damage. This is not the best possible trapper shield you could get. You could probably get a really good rare instead, but it's a really nice alternative and it's a really nice end game uh, shield for someone, uh, for a trapper. I'd love to find this as a trapper. It's rad. I, I think this is un this thing is underrated. I, I call this thing underrated. So moving right along, we have Skater's Vigil, Tornado Wand. Stone still amidst the reeds, breath fogging in the iron cold air. He sits, he waits, he watches, a piscatorial vigil, sat by the river, his cathedral, his patience, his unanswered prayer. And that's from Jojoba, I reckon that's a soft day, <laughs> Mansell, bard, angler, and adventurer. Now this thing is, uh, is, uh, bringing back the rise of the elemental wonder. Now elemental wonders are already really good. It's pretty easy to make a good element of wonder with just a white wand. You stack like crit chance in your build, crit chance, crit multi, and run like uh, anger and wrath. And uh, you can use a white wand and still deal a lot of damage. But this thing, if you, you, you wield this thing, and you're going to do so much extra damage. Firstly, no physical damage, that's fine. This is an element of wonder wand. That's to be expected, this thing deals absolutely no physical damage. It has increased attack speed. The uh, attack speed is somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5, and uh, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. I think that's about as high as you get on imbued ones anyway. I think that's about top, that's pretty top end for attack speed for ones anyway. So I, th I think that's actually pretty pretty much on the on the good uh, range there. 340 to 400 accuracy is a decent amount of extra accuracy. Uh, so that's very nice for going a crit, a crit build and all elemental, elemental wonder builds are crit builds. So we're getting that right off the bat there. 20 to 30% increased critical strike chance is not a huge amount, but it is something. But then on top of that, that what, what makes this one actually good is attacks with this weapon have 100 to 100 115% increased elemental damage. So that is specifically with this weapon. So if you are dual wielding and you're alternating attacks, then uh, it'll be the only the attacks that work with this specifically weapon, this weapon specifically. But if you're using this as your primary attack weapon, then you're going to be dealing a huge amount of extra elemental damage. That's like 10, 12 elemental nodes, maybe maybe 8 to 12 elemental nodes, depending on the how good each of those nodes you get. But that's like 8 to 10 passives, you know, 8 to 12 passives worth of damage on this one one right there. So I think this is a very nice one. This is also uh, 
a pretty good example of a unique, the more a unique I want to see more of in the game, which is uh, a good end game unique, but not your final uh, weapon. So essentially, you can get once you get into maps, you might equip this thing, and you're going to kick ass through most of the low to mid level maps. And then later on, you can get a really nice one to replace this something with very high crit chance, crit multi, and then flat physical, flat elemental damage or something like that on it as well. And uh, you know, very high attack speed and all that jazz. You can get all the perfect. You can get your perfect uh, kraken wand, for example. But uh, this thing here is a very nice stepping stone unique. Stepping Stone Endgame Unique, and I hope to see more of these sorts of things. And that actually brings us into the next Unique, which is very much the same sort of idea. Soul Strike, Spike Point, Arrow Quiver. In this chaotic world, the rewards of the soul outlast the rewards of the flesh. You guys probably saw me tease this one in the teaser video I did for 1.1.4. And uh, this thing is another one of those Stepping Stone Uniques. It's a very nice Endgame Unique, or a very nice when you've just gotten to Endgame Unique. 64, you know, that's before you get into maps usually. You equip this thing and it's very, very nice and it's going to carry you for a good 10, 15, 20 levels through the end game until you get a really nice rare quiver. And that's what I think unique should be a lot of the time. They should be build defining or they should be really powerful but can be exceeded by rares. And that's this is another example here. Now this thing has dexterity on it, which is very handy for off-class bow users. It's uh, now that the dexterity base quiver has been removed. Quivers with dexterity as a mod on it is actually very handy to have, so that's a very nice stat to have right on there. Adds 18 and 26 chaos damage, it's not a big deal. That's really not a big deal, it's just a bit of extra added damage, it doesn't really scale. It's very hard to actually scale that, and most bow builds won't scale that, but it's free extra damage, so what the hell. 11% increased attack speed is pretty nice, 104 x maximum energy shield. This is, this is really cool right here, and we get into the, the energy shield mods. This is a, uh, a CI crit split. Arrow <laughs> quiver right here. This is what I'm seeing. Uh, CI, uh, critical split, arrow, so chaos inoculation builds using a lot of ES or stacking a lot of ES and then using something like Ghost Reaver and things like that. Their ultimate endgame quiver is something with crit chance, crit multi and stuff like that. But this is a fantastic defensive item for bow users. And we may see people in hardcore using this anyway on their CI crit split archer because it's a good defensive item. You get 104 ex extra maximum energy shield. That's a pretty significant amount. And then 40% reduced energy shield recharge rate, but 150% increased energy shield cooldown recovery. So I've pulled up the math just here for this because this one's a little bit... This is a pretty complex combination of stats just here. Uh, essentially, in your shield will start regenerating, your energy shield will start regenerating after you stop taking damage. For, uh, after about 2.4 seconds instead of waiting, having to wait 6 seconds. So essentially, uh, if you're like a fast moving character, you get in and out of danger. There's a less of a wait before your energy shield starts regenerating. Okay, that's, that's the positive effect just there. You can start uh, healing yourself essentially quicker after combat. All right, that's the positive point. The negative effect then is that your regen happens over the course of five seconds instead of three seconds. So usually it'll take, it'll take, five, it'll take three seconds for your energy shield to regen from empty to full. Uh, and then it's now it's going to take five seconds to regen from empty to full. So there's a slower recharge, so it means you have a little bit more downtime uh, from the actual regen, but you start regenerating quicker. Now this uh, you're essentially shaving 3.6 seconds off uh, your overall time to full health, even though you're losing those. You know you're losing two seconds in the actual time it takes to regen, theoretically, assuming you you somehow get down to 1 ES, but it starts regenerating quicker, so overall this ends up being a positive thing. This is, I think this is, I think I've broken this down correctly. As I said, this one's a little bit more complex, but essentially you get back to full life quicker overall. So there's maybe a bit more chance you're vulnerable while you're regenerating. Like if you take a hit before you're back, back up to full ES because it takes a while to regenerate, then you're a little bit more vulnerable then. But otherwise, if you get back somewhere safe, you know, you sort of lightning warp away, you'll back off a bit, you'll heal back to full uh, quicker overall. I think, I think I've got that right. So with all this in mind, firstly, this is... Is this a Templar? I, I I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is a naked naked a naked Templar. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on right here. It seems like a naked Templar to me. But there you go. Um, <laughs> I don't think this unique is all that good. This is not very strong 
or overall. I said that it was nice design for uniques that I want to see in the game. These sort of stepping stone uniques, this is something you can start using on a CI crit split ranger for example, or a CI crit split shadow, uh, to have a more defensive item, and I think we will see some people using this, but it's actually not that not that powerful I don't think overall. Like it's really missing like that crit chance, that crit multi, uh, it doesn't really have that much damage on it. It has no physical damage to scale and things like that. I think it will have some niche uses, maybe. But uh, overall, I, I don't think it's very powerful overall. But the uniques... Uh, in general this week have been very cool. I like the Forbidden Taste. Also, it has rad uh, art on your toolbar. I've seen people actually use this to reskin the other flask because it looks awesome and and being a pretty interesting new utility flask as well. Jaws of Agony, I think, is amazing, and I think people criminally underrate that, so I'd love to see some more trappers using this shield. And uh, Pi Piscator's Vigil is uh, a very powerful elemental wand to wand. I think that's going to be very good until you get an insanely good rare. And then uh, Soul Strike is another sort of design I'd like to see more of, but I don't think maybe the execution was all that strong. I, I, f I failed to see a lot of the strength of this item. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed my analysis. I'd love if you guys can share your thoughts with me in the comments below. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.